Proto-Balto-Slavic is a reconstructed proto-language descending from Proto-Indo-European From Proto-Balto-Slavic, the later Balto-Slavic languages are thought to have developed, composed of sub-branches Baltic and Slavic, and including modern Latvian, Lithuanian, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian and Serbo-Croatian among others. Like most other proto-languages, it is not attested by any surviving texts but has been reconstructed using the comparative method. There are several isoglosses that Baltic and Slavic languages share in phonology, morphology and accentology, which represent common innovations from Proto-Indo-European times and can be chronologically arranged. Phonology Consonants Proto-Indo-European voiced aspirated stops lost their aspiration in Proto-Balto-Slavic. Stops were no longer distinguished between fortis and aspirated but were voiceless and voiced. However, several new palatal postalveolar consonants had developed, asterisk s and asterisk z from earlier palatovelar plosives and asterisk s from asterisk s as a result of the Ruki sound law. Z surfaced as an allophone of s, before a voiced consonant in Proto-Balto-Slavic. Topic. Vowels Proto-Balto-Slavic preserved much of the late Proto-Indo-European vowel system. One noticeable difference between the two was the merging of earlier short o, and a, into a. Earlier syllabic sonorants in pi had been converted into liquid diphthongs by inserting asterisk i or asterisk u before the sonorant in Proto-Balto-Slavic. Diphthongs. Proto-Balto-Slavic preserved most pi diphthongs intact except for the short o and a merger. The merger of short o and a carried into the production of Proto-Balto-Slavic diphthongs. The diphthongs that contained the onglide o in pi consequently became diphthongs with the onglide a in Proto-Balto-Slavic. Former eu had become jau, so that no eu diphthong existed anymore. Proto-Balto-Slavic also possessed sequences of a close vowel, followed by asterisk l, asterisk r, asterisk m or asterisk n, the sonorant diphthongs. Their accents behaved like the other diphthongs rather than like vowel consonant sequences. Topic. Accent and the acute register The accent of Balto-Slavic and its descendants is still a topic of active research, and there is still disagreement over the developments in many cases. The following gives only a general overview of the points for which a general consensus has been reached among linguists. Differing opinions are noted when necessary. Most Proto-Balto-Slavic words could be accented on any syllable, as in Proto-Indo-European. The placement of the accent was changed significantly relative to pi, with much paradigmatic leveling of the mobile pi accent, along with leftward and rightward shifts conditioned by the surrounding phonemes. In the early Balto-Slavic period, an additional articulatory feature, the acute register, had developed on certain syllables, particularly those that ended in a pi laryngeal consonant detailed further below. It was a suprasegmental feature whose exact phonetic nature is not quite clear. It likely involved glottalization at some stage, as a similar articulatory feature is found in the Latvian broken tone, which is a reflex of it. It is denoted variously with a superscript glottalization symbol, a glottal stop symbol, or simply as the laryngeal cover symbol H. Only the presence or absence of the feature, called acute and circumflex, respectively, was phonemic. Furthermore, the distinction applied only to long syllables. The following syllable types were long, and thus could have this distinction. Syllables with long vowels, they could be original pi long vowels or vowels that were lengthened by a following laryngeal. Syllables with vocalic diphthongs asterisk a, asterisk i, asterisk o. Syllables with sonorant diphthongs, which consisted of a vowel, followed by asterisk l, asterisk r, asterisk m or asterisk n, thus, any syllable was either long with acute register, long with circumflex non-acute register or short with no register distinction. Topic alternations Proto-Balto-Slavic retained the system of oblaut from its parent language, but it was far less productive and had been significantly reworked. 
Vowel alternations were often leveled, but it is not always easy to determine how far this leveling had progressed by the time the Balto-Slavic dialects began to diverge, as the leveling progressed along the same lines in all of them to some degree. The lengthened grade remained productive in word derivation and was used in many innovative formations that were not present in Proto-Indo-European. After the merger of asterisk o and asterisk a, the resulting phoneme asterisk a could lengthen to both asterisk a and asterisk o. Pre-Proto-Slavic retained many such uses of lengthened grades in morphology. The length distinctions are reflected as vowel quality distinctions in late Common Slavic (LCS) and the later Slavic languages. Early Slavic asterisk Slava fame glory greater than LCS asterisk Slava OCS Slava versus early Slavic asterisk Slava word greater than LCS asterisk Slovo OCS Slovo early Slavic asterisk Tvori substance greater than LCS asterisk Tvar OCS Tvar versus early Slavic asterisk Tvorite to form, create, greater than asterisk TV Oridi OCS TV Oridi these are similar examples in Lithuanian, Lithuanian protus intellect, mind, to understand. Lithuanian G risk goodness good on the basis of the existing length alternations inherited from Proto-Indo-European, new alternations arose between the long asterisk I, asterisk U and the short asterisk I, asterisk U. This latter type of apophony was not productive in Pi. Compare, Lithuanian m sis battle versus musti to kill, hit. Lithuanian lycus remainder versus likti to stay, keep the new type of apophonic length was especially used in pre-proto-Slavic in the formation of durative, iterative and imperfective verbs. Compare, early Slavic asterisk durate to tear perfective greater than lcs asterisk d, rati ocs d, rati versus Early Slavic asterisk arz durate to tear imperfective greater than lcs asterisk ors durati ocs raz durati early Slavic asterisk burate to pick greater than lcs asterisk b rati ocs b rati versus early Slavic asterisk burate to choose greater than lcs asterisk burati ocs burati certain pairs of words show a change of older initial asterisk a from pi asterisk h a asterisk h o asterisk h e asterisk h e to asterisk E, which is sometimes called Rozdowowski's rule. The exact conditioning of this change is currently not well understood, but led to alternations between asterisk E and asterisk A in related words or even as alternative forms of the same word. The alternations often gave rise to different initial vowels in different languages. Several words retained the alternation into Proto-Slavic times as well, which became an alternation between asterisk J E and asterisk O. Proto-Balto Slavic asterisk Alawa, asterisk Alawa, lead, greater than Bulgarian dial, Alavo, Polish Olo, Russian Olovo, Old Prussian Elwas tilde Alwas. Proto-Balto Slavic asterisk Azera, asterisk Azera, lake, greater than Serbo-Croatian Jezero, Polish Jezioro, Russian Ozero, Old Prussian Asaran, Latvian Ezers, Lithuanian Azeras, Latgalian Azers. Morphology Proto-Balto-Slavic retained many of the grammatical features present in Proto-Indo-European. Nominals Proto-Balto-Slavic made use of seven cases Nominative – subject Accusative – direct object Genitive, possession, relation or association, direct object of negated verb Locative, stationary location Dative, indirect object Instrumental, tool, means by which, accompanying Vocative, direct address The eighth case, the ablative, had merged with the genitive case. Some of the inflectional endings for the genitive were replaced with those of the former ablative. An innovation within Balto-Slavic was the use of the genitive in place of the accusative for the direct object of a negative verb. That feature is still present in its descendants. I have read the book. Russian a sidl nigu ya sidl nigu, Slovene sem bral nigo, Lithuanian niga skasio. I have not read the book. Russian a ne sidl nigi ya ne sidl nigi, Slovene nisam bral nij, Lithuanian nagos neskacho proto balto Slavic still distinguished three numbers, singular, dual, and plural. The dual was retained into the early Slavic languages, but most modern Slavic languages have lost it. 
Slovene, Chakavian, a dialect of Serbo-Croatian, and Sorbian are the only remaining Slavic languages that still make consistent use of the dual number. In most other Slavic languages, the dual number is not retained except for historically paired nouns eyes, ears, shoulders, certain fixed expressions, and agreement of nouns when used with numbers. It is synchronically often analyzed as genitive singular because of the resemblance in forms. The Baltic languages also used to have a dual number system, but it has become practically obsolete in modern Latvian and Lithuanian. Proto-Balto-Slavic nouns could also have one of three genders, masculine, feminine or neuter. Many originally neuter nouns in Pi had become masculine in Balto-Slavic so the group was somewhat reduced relative to the others. The modern Slavic languages largely continue the use of three grammatical genders, but modern Baltic languages primarily use only two, masculine and feminine. Latvian distinguishes between only two genders, masculine and feminine. Lithuanian distinguishes between only masculine and feminine in nouns, but in pronouns, participles and numerals, the neuter is retained. An innovation within Balto-Slavic was the creation of a distinct, definite, inflection of adjectives by affixing forms of the pronoun asterisk ya to existing adjective forms. The inflection had a function resembling that of the definite article the in English, Lithuanian jerasis, Old Church Slavonic dobri, the good, versus jeras, good. The distinction is no longer productive in most Slavic languages today, and most Slavic languages preserve a mixture of definite forms and indefinite forms in a single paradigm. Russian, Czech and Polish for example use the original definite nominative singular forms Russian yj, a o y j, Asia, o j e, Polish y, a, e, Czech y, a, a. Czech and Polish have lost the indefinite forms except in a few limited uses, while Russian preserves the indefinite nominative forms as the so-called short forms, used in some cases in predicate position. Serbo-Croatian and Slovene still distinguish the two types but only in the masculine nominative singular definite I versus indefinite with no ending. Bulgarian and Macedonian have innovated completely new forms, affixing forms of the demonstrative pronoun asterisk t instead. Topic verbs The distinction between athematic and thematic verbs was preserved, but athematic verbs were gradually reduced in number. The primary first-person singular endings, athematic asterisk me and thematic asterisk o, were kept distinct, giving Balto-Slavic asterisk me and asterisk respectively. The thematic ending was occasionally extended by adding the athematic ending to it, apparently in Balto-Slavic times, resulting in a third ending, asterisk me greater than asterisk m greater than asterisk m, replacing the original ending in Slavic, reflected as asterisk o Russian u u, Polish e, Bulgarian a. In many Slavic languages, particularly South and West Slavic, the athematic ending was analogically extended to other verbs and even replaced the thematic ending completely in some languages Slovene, Serbo-Croatian. In the Baltic languages, only the thematic ending was retained, as Lithuanian U and Latvian U to be is ESMU, which preserves the original asterisk M of the athematic ending, but it was extended with the thematic ending. Balto Slavic replaced the pi second person singular ending asterisk c with asterisk sehi greater than asterisk se for which the origin is not fully understood. According to Cortland, the ending is a combination of the ending asterisk c with asterisk ehi, which he considers to be the original thematic ending. The new ending, asterisk se, carried over into all three branches of Balto Slavic and came to be used in all athematic root verbs in Baltic. In Old Church Slavonic, it completely ousted the older ending. In the other Slavic languages, the original ending generally survives except in the athematic verbs. The aspectual distinction between present and aorist was retained and still productive in Proto-Balto-Slavic. It was preserved into Early Slavic but was gradually replaced with an innovated aspectual distinction, with a variety of forms. Modern Bulgarian retained the aorist, however, alongside the innovated system, producing a four-way contrast. The Indo-European perfect, stative was falling out of use in Proto-Balto-Slavic and was likely already reduced to relics by Proto-Balto-Slavic times. It survives in Slavic only in the irregular Old Church Slavonic form Veda I know to see, which preserves an irregular first-person singular ending, presumed to originate in the perfect. Proto-Indo-European did not originally have an infinitive, but it did have several constructions that served as action nouns. Two of these, the tis and tus nouns, remained in use into Balto-Slavic and acquired verbal noun and infinitive-like functions. 
They were not fully integrated into the verb system by Balto Slavic times, however, and the individual Balto Slavic languages diverge on the details. In Slavic and the Eastern Baltic languages, the infinitive was formed from a case form of the tis noun, Lithuanian t, Latvian t, Proto Slavic asterisk t. Old Prussian, however, has t and twe as infinitive endings, the latter of which comes from the tus noun instead. The shorter t could come from either type. Topic development from Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Balto-Slavic Austrian Balto-Slavist Georg Holzer has reconstructed a relative chronology of 50 Balto-Slavic sound changes, referring only to phonology, not to accentuation, from Proto-Balto-Slavic down to the modern daughter languages. However, only the first 12 are common Balto-Slavic and so relevant for this article only Winter's Law is a unique common change, Ruki Law, asterisk s greater than asterisk s after asterisk r, asterisk u, asterisk k or asterisk i. Laryngeals are lost between consonants in non-initial syllables. Winter's Law, short vowels are lengthened when followed by a non-aspirated voiced stop in some accounts, only in a closed syllable. Asterisk o greater than asterisk a. Aspirated voiced stops lose their aspiration and merge with the plain voiced stops. Labiovelar stops lose their labialization and merge with the plain velars. Satimization, asterisk k, asterisk g greater than asterisk s, asterisk z. Asterisk ewv greater than asterisk awv. Asterisk i sometimes asterisk u is inserted before syllabic sonorants, creating new liquid diphthongs. Asterisk wl, asterisk wr greater than asterisk l, asterisk r word initially. Topic Winter's Law Winter's Law caused lengthening of vowels if a plain voiced stop followed, and the new long vowels received the acute register. According to some analyses, the change occurred only if the stop was in syllable coda the syllable ending with that consonant. It operated while there was still a phonemic distinction between plain and aspirated voiced stops, which later merged. Consequently, the distinction between those two series has been indirectly preserved in Proto-Balto-Slavic by long acuted vowels. Furthermore, Winter's Law took place before asterisk O and asterisk A merged, as it lengthened earlier asterisk O to asterisk and asterisk A to. On the basis of relative chronology of sound changes, it has been ascertained that Winter's Law acted rather late, after some other less prominent Balto-Slavic changes had occurred such as after the disappearance of laryngeals in prevocalic position. Compare, pi asterisk egg ohm greater than pre Balto Slavic asterisk easy home greater than Winter's Law asterisk easy home greater than Proto Balto Slavic asterisk as in greater than common Slavic asterisk j as, greater than OCS as, Slovene jazz. Topic satimization Proto Balto Slavic generally shows satim reflexes of the three velar series, labiovelars merge into the plain velars while palatovelars develop into sibilants asterisk s and asterisk z. There are a number of words in Balto Slavic that show centum reflexes instead, with palatovelars appearing as plain velars. A number can be explained by regular sound laws, but some laws have been obscured by numerous analogical developments. Others are argued to be borrowings from centum languages. For example, Proto Balto Slavic asterisk kar w kau Lithuanian karve, OCS krava, Russian karova is likely a feminine derivation of a lost masculine noun that was likely borrowed from Proto Celtic asterisk karwas deer, Middle Welsh carw, Middle Breton karo, Middle Cornish karo, which in turn is a regular reflex of pi asterisk ker, h woes. Pi palatovelars could also depalatalize in Balto Slavic. Several depalatalization rules for Balto Slavic have been proposed. According to Matasovic, the depalatalization of palatovelars occurred before sonorant followed by a back vowel, k, greater than k, underscore rv back. That would explain centum reflexes such as these ones, Lithuanian akmuo, Latvian akmans, and OCS kami would have regular, k, as opposed to Sanskrit asma. Stone. OCS svekri. Mother -in -law. Old Prussian Baldnan saddle. Another view is that satimization occurred in Baltic and Slavic independently after Slavic had split off. Topic Ruki La Pi asterisk S was preserved in Balto Slavic in most positions. According to the Ruki law, it became asterisk S when it was preceded by asterisk R, asterisk U, asterisk K or asterisk I. It also included diphthongs ending in asterisk u or asterisk i, the long vowels asterisk u and asterisk i, whether original or from a following laryngeal, and the voiced velar asterisk g. 
Among the Balto Slavic languages, the evidence of Ruki rule is recognizable only in Lithuanian and Slavic because in the other languages *s, *s, *s and *s all merge into plain *s. In Lithuanian, *s and *s are merged to *s instead, remaining distinct from *s. In Slavic, *s merges with *s but *s remains distinct and becomes *s x before back vowels. Most handbooks, on the basis of Lithuanian material, state that in Baltic Ruki law has been applied only partially. The most common claim is that the law applied unconditionally in Lithuanian only after asterisk r, while after asterisk u, asterisk k and asterisk i, both asterisk s and asterisk s occur. Compare, Lithuanian osra don, Lithuanian osis ir, Lithuanian maces sak, Lithuanian tysis reflects asterisk s while Slavic asterisk tix, reflects asterisk s. There is no simple solution to such double reflexes the Ruki law in Lithuanian and thus no simple answer to the question of whether Ruki law is a common Balto-Slavic isogloss or not. The most probable answer seems to be the assumption that pi asterisk s was changed to asterisk s after asterisk r, asterisk u, asterisk k, asterisk i completely regularly within Balto Slavic proper, but the traces of the effect of Ruki law were erased by subsequent changes in Lithuanian, such as the change of word final asterisk s to asterisk s. Generally, it can be ascertained that Lithuanian shows the effect of Ruki law only in old words inherited from Balto-Slavic period so Lithuanian s appears in words that have a complete formational and morphological correspondence in Slavic ruling out the possibility of accidental, parallel formations. It appears that Palatovelars yielded fricatives in Balto-Slavic before the effect of Ruki law, so that asterisk k's appears simply as asterisk s. Compare, Slavic asterisk desn, right i.e. opposite to left OCS desn, Russian desnij, Serbo-Croatian desni, Lithuanian designis Slavic asterisk os, axel, axis OCS os, Rus, os, scr. Os, Lithuanian osis topic syllabic sonorants The Proto-Indo-European syllabic sonorants asterisk l, asterisk r, asterisk m, and asterisk n, abbreviated asterisk r, developed a prothetic vowel in front of them, converting them into sonorant diphthongs. Both asterisk i and asterisk u appear as prothetic vowels, yielding reflexes asterisk im, asterisk in, asterisk ir, asterisk il, asterisk ir, and asterisk um, asterisk un, asterisk er, asterisk ul, asterisk er. It has remained an unsolved problem to this day as to the exact phonological conditions that trigger which reflex. Regardless, analysis of their distribution has shown that asterisk i appears much more often, suggesting that it is the default reflex, with asterisk u appearing only in special cases. In a sample of 215 Balto-Slavic lexical items, 36 17% are attested only with asterisk or reflexes, 22 10% with both reflexes in the same language or branch or with one in Slavic and the other in Baltic, and the remaining 157 73% are attested only with asterisk IR reflex. Several theories have been proposed, the most notable being the one by André Valent from 1950. According to him, asterisk u arose after pi labiovelars. If true, it would be the only trace of pi labiovelars in Balto-Slavic. After surveying Reinhold Troutman's 1924 Balto-Slavic Dictionary, Jerzy Kurilovich in 1956 found no phonologically consistent distribution for the dual reflexes except in a single position. After pi palatovelars Baltic and Slavic have only asterisk ir reflex, George Shevelev in 1965 inspected Slavic data in much detail, but in the end, he demonstrated only that the distribution of the dual reflexes in Slavic is not reducible to phonological conditioning, according to an analysis by Christian Stang in 1966 Kurilovics's statistics proved only that asterisk IR reflexes are much more frequent than asterisk IR reflexes. Stang made several important observations. Balto Slavic grammatical morphemes have asterisk IR reflexes, but no asterisk IR reflexes. Asterisk IR reflexes are productive in oblaut alternations, while asterisk IR are not. Many words containing asterisk IR diphthongs have an expressive meaning, meaning I fat, dumb, lazy, clumsy, E crooked, bent, E crippled, decrepit, IV dark, dirty, or V. They are of onomatopoeic origin. Such words could have been innovated at various times during the prehistory and have no relation to the Balto-Slavic reflexes of pi asterisk r. 
Such U plus sonorant combinations reflect a universal semantic category. Compare English plump, dumb, bungle, bulky, clumsy, glum, dumpy, etc., German dumb, dumpf, stum, stumpf, plump, etc. Stang's analysis indicates that asterisk IR was the regular result of the diphthongization of pi syllabic sonorants. Doublets with expressive meaning are then explained as expressively motivated asterisk er replacements of the original asterisk ir reflex, or as borrowings from substratum dialects such as Germanic that regularly had the asterisk r greater than asterisk er reflex, when pre Balto Slavic no longer had syllabic sonorants and were then used side by side with the original reflex. According to Janus Enzelins and Reinhold Troutman, asterisk er reflex resulted in zero grade of morphemes that had pi asterisk o greater than Balto Slavic asterisk a in normal grade. Matasovic, in 2008, proposed the following rules: at first, syllabic sonorants develop a prothetic schwa asterisk r greater than asterisk r asterisk greater than asterisk i in a final syllable asterisk greater than asterisk u after velars and before nasals. Asterisk, greater than asterisk I otherwise. Topic laryngeals and the acute register laryngeals generally disappeared as independent phonemes. When they appeared after a vowel, they caused compensatory lengthening of that vowel, as in almost all Indo-European branches. Laryngeals between consonants disappeared as well, but in the first syllable, they are reflected as asterisk A. Compare, pi asterisk h r h de heron, stork ancient Greek erodios, Latin ardia greater than Slavic asterisk rhoda Serbo-Croatian rhoda. Pi asterisk shish, l oblique case stem of asterisk say l s salt greater than Old Prussian sal, Slavic asterisk sal, OCS sal, Polish sal, Russian sal. Syllabic sonorants followed by laryngeals do not show any different outcome from syllabic sonorants in other environments. Balto Slavic shares that characteristic with Germanic but no other Indo European languages, which show clearly distinct reflexes in this case. Compare, pi asterisk place, h nos greater than proto Balto Slavic asterisk pil nos, Slavic asterisk p, lane, Lithuanian pilnas, greater than proto Germanic asterisk fullus, asterisk ul, English full, but greater than Latin plenus, asterisk n, greater than n normally. It appears, however, that laryngeals left traces in Balto Slavic, they triggered the acute register on a preceding vowel or sonorant diphthong, as an articulatory residue. While laryngeals were the most important source of the acute in Balto Slavic, they were not the only source. The acute emerges in the following cases, in all syllables closed by a laryngeal in pi, whether lengthening of a preceding vowel occurred or not. In particular, it also occurred in syllables with a sonorant diphthong. It probably also occurred when the preceding vowel was already in the lengthened grade. In all syllables closed by a voiced stop in pi, and were lengthened according to the Winter's Law. In all cases of vowel lengthening within Balto Slavic, all vowel lengthening that occurred as part of word formations only within the Balto Slavic period and did not originate in pi, which included the new alternations asterisk u tilde asterisk u and asterisk i tilde asterisk i that were innovated within Balto Slavic. It also included asterisk un from earlier asterisk un before a stop. More details below. The rules governing the emergence of the acute in Balto Slavic seem complicated when they are formulated within the framework of classical Proto Indo European laryngeal theory, as there is no obvious connection between laryngeals and voiced stops, both of which trigger the acute register. Frederick Cortland has proposed an alternative, more elegant and economic rule for the derivation of Balto-Slavic acute by using the glottalic theory framework of Proto-Indo-European. He proposed that the acute is a reflex of a glottal stop, which has two sources, the merger of pi laryngeals and the dissolution of pi pre-glottalized stop voiced stops in traditional reconstruction to glottal stop and voiced stop, according to the Winter's Law. Cortland's formulation appears very elegant initially and seems to be confirmed independently by a glottal stop in Latvian as a reflex of Balto Slavic acute in words in which accent was retracted, and it in accordance with the typological universal. Most languages with high tone is developed in syllables closed with a glottal stop, however, in Lithuanian, it developed into a falling tone, the opposite of the other languages. Rising tone can then be explained as a result of the development of high tone on the second mora of a long syllable. Though elegant, Cortland's theory also has some problems. The glottalic theory, which was proposed in the 1970s, is not generally accepted among linguists, and today only a small minority of linguists would consider it a reliable and self-supportive framework onto which to base modern Indo-European research. 
Also, there is a number of Balto-Slavic lexemes which point to acute accent but that are provably not of pi-laryngeal origin, and some of them were a result of apophonical lengthenings occurring only in Balto-Slavic period. Matisovic lists the following scenario as the most probable origin of Balto-Slavic acute. The acute initially arose in the syllables closed by a laryngeal, partly from the retraction of word final accent onto such syllables, which were phonologically long Hertz law. Other long syllables, if they bore the accent, were circumflexed, with later falling tone. Later, new Balto-Slavic long vowels were acuted. The younger acute has been largely eliminated in Slavic by Meyer's law. Topic nasals word finally, asterisk m became asterisk n in Balto-Slavic. Final nasals are not directly preserved in most Balto-Slavic languages, however, making evidence mostly indirect. Old Prussian uniquely preserves final asterisk n, and there is indeed a clear attestation of the change in the nominative accusative of neuters, such as a sarin lake. Lithuanian has vowel lengthening that reflects earlier nasal vowels, but they could conceivably come from either final n or m and thus do not provide evidence either way. In Slavic, all word final consonants are lost in one way or another so there is no direct evidence there either. However, there is indirect evidence in the form of sandy effects that were preserved in some Slavic pronouns. For example, Old Church Slavonic attests constructions like s, nim, with him, which can be traced to the Balto-Slavic asterisk sun imis where the first word reflects the common Proto-Indo-European preposition asterisk com, with, compare Latin cum, and the second reflects the pi pronominal stem asterisk a Latin as, German er. In Slavic, in accordance with the Law of open syllables. The final n of the preposition was reinterpreted as belonging to the pronoun, which acted to preserve the nasal in its Balto Slavic form, thus corroborating that it was indeed n. If the change of asterisk m to asterisk n had not taken place at an earlier stage, the phrase would have been asterisk sum imis, which would have given asterisk s, mim, in OCS instead. Vowels The following changes to vowels in Proto-Balto-Slavic can be noted. Long vowels are shortened before word final asterisk n. Thus, the stem accusative singular, originally asterisk m, was shortened to asterisk n, Lithuanian a, Old Prussian n, Slavic asterisk o. If the genitive plural ending was originally asterisk om, it was shortened to asterisk on by this change. Word final asterisk os and asterisk on are raised to asterisk us and asterisk un when stressed, e.g. asterisk eghome greater than Balto Slavic asterisk ezin, asterisk asin, asterisk zun greater than Slavic asterisk as. This causes a split in the o stem paradigm, which is leveled in various ways later on. In Baltic, the nominals with original ending stress are transferred to the u stem inflection. In Slavic, masculines of the two types are conflated and merge almost completely in most modern languages. Word final asterisk me is reduced to asterisk n after a long vowel. This change occurred after the shortening, so that the vowel remained long and, if applicable, acuted. For example, the a stem instrumental singular ending asterisk me was reduced to asterisk and greater than Lithuanian a, Slavic asterisk o compared to the o stem ending asterisk me greater than Slavic asterisk o Asterisk o greater than asterisk a Asterisk un is lengthened to asterisk n with acute when a stop followed. In Slavic, it is reflected as asterisk y, with no nasal. For example, pi asterisk hunk, to get used to, greater than Balto Slavic asterisk unk greater than Lithuanian junk t, Latvian jukt, OCS vina t, Upper Sorbian wuknik. Asterisk in did not exhibit lengthening in such conditions, as older literature often states. Topic. Accentual system The Proto-Indo-European accent was completely reworked in Balto-Slavic, with far-reaching consequences for accentual systems of the modern daughter languages. The development was conditioned by several delicate factors, such as the syllable length, presence of a laryngeal closing the syllable, and the position of pi ictus. There is still no consensus among Balto-Slavists on the precise details of the development of Balto-Slavic accentual system. All modern research is based on the seminal study of Stang 1957, which basically instituted the field of comparative Balto-Slavic accentology. However, many laws and correspondences have been discovered and are now held to be true by the majority of researchers even if the exact details sometimes remain in dispute. 
Early Balto Slavic retained a simple accent in which only the placement of the accent was distinctive, but there were no pitch distinctions. The acute register was initially no more than an articulatory feature on certain syllables and could occur independently of accent placement. However, the acute was the trigger for several sound changes that affected the placement of the accent. For example, under Hertz law, the accent tended to shift leftwards onto a syllable that bore the acute. On accented syllables, the acute came to be accompanied by a distinct pitch contour in late Proto-Balto Slavic. Consequently, accented syllables of any type that could carry the acute register in Proto-Balto Slavic listed above now differed in pitch contour as well as articulation. They had rising or falling pitch whether accented acute syllables had rising or falling pitch differed by dialect. The tonal accents that emerged from this process are called acute accent and circumflex accent in Balto-Slavic linguistics. Syllables with a single short vowel could not bear the acute register and so also had tonal distinctions. When accented, they had the same pitch contour though nondistinctive as a circumflex accented syllable. The syllables are said to have short accent. To reconstruct the Balto-Slavic accent, the most important are those languages that have retained tonal oppositions, Lithuanian, Latvian, probably Old Prussian and the West-South Slavic languages of Slovene and Serbo-Croatian. However, one should keep in mind that the prosodical systems of dialects in the aforementioned languages are sometimes very different from those of standard languages. For example, some Croatian dialects like Kakavian and Posavian dialects of Slavonian Stokavian are especially important for Balto-Slavic accentology, as they retain more archaic and complex tonal accentual system than the Neo-Stokavian dialect on which modern standard varieties of Serbo-Croatian Bosnian, Croatian and Serbian are based. On the other hand, many dialects have completely lost tonal oppositions such as some Kaikavian varieties, the Zagreb spoken non-standard idiom. A minority view, originating from Vladimir Dybo, considers Balto-Slavic accentuation based on correspondences in the Germanic, Celtic, and Italic languages more archaic than Greek Vedic and therefore closer to Proto-Indo-European. Notation What follows is a short overview of the commonly used diacritical marks for Balto-Slavic BSL, accents and or prosodic features, all based on the example letter A. In each case, there is a crude characterization of the pronunciation in terms of high, mid, and low tone sequences. Lithuanian, falling, HL, acute, A, rising, H, L, H, circumflex, A, short, H, A, Latvian, on all syllables, falling, H, L, A, rising, L, H, or, lengthened, A, broken, L, a Slovenian, falling, H, L, A, rising, L, H, A, short, H, A, Serbo-Croatian, short, falling, H, L, A, long, falling, H, M, L, A, short, rising, L, H, A, long, rising, L, M, H, A, post-tonic length, a common Slavic, short, falling, H, L, short, circumflex, A, long, falling, H, H M L long circumflex A acute L H old acute old rising A neo acute L M H old acute old rising A or in Croatian dialects, especially Kakavian and Posavian, the neo acute new acute a new rising tone is usually marked with tilde as A. Short neo acute short new rising is marked as A. Neo acutes represent a post Proto Slavic development. Here is a reverse key to help decode the various diacritical marks, acute accent, a, usually long rising and or BSL, acute. Neoacute in some Slavic reconstructions. The default accent when a language has only one phonemic prosodic feature such as stress in Russian, length in Czech. Marks long falling in Lithuanian because this derives from BSL, acute, grave accent, a, usually short rising or simply short, circumflex accent, a, BSL, circumflex in reconstructions. Broken tone in modern Baltic Latvian and Zimatian Lithuanian, a vowel with a glottal stop in the middle derives from BSL, acute. Long falling in modern Slavic languages. Tilde, a, alternative notation for BSL, circumflex in reconstructions. Long rising in various modern languages Lithuanian, Latvian, archaic Serbo-Croatian dialects such as Chikavian. Derives from diverse sources, Lithuanian double grave accent a, usually short falling mostly in Slavic. Derived from circumflex equals long falling by converting the acute portion of the accent to a grave, much as a simple acute equals long rising is shortened by conversion to a grave, double acute accent a, old acute in some Slavic reconstructions. 
as opposed to a single acute for Slavic neoacute in reconstructions. Based on the fact that the old acute was shortened in common Slavic, Macron a, vowel length, particularly in syllables without tone such as unstressed syllables in Slavic, Breve a, vowel shortness, there are multiple competing systems used for different languages and different periods. The most important are these Three-way system of Proto-Slavic, Proto-Balto-Slavic, Modern Lithuanian, acute tone a, versus circumflex tone a or a versus short accent a. Four-way Serbo-Croatian system, also used in Slovenian and often in Slavic reconstructions, long-rising a, short-rising a, long-falling a, short-falling a. Two-way length, long a versus short a. Length only, as in Czech and Slovak, long a versus short a. Stress only, as in Russian, Ukrainian and Bulgarian, stressed a versus unstressed a. Many non-prosodic marks are also found in various languages in combinations with certain letters. The various combinations of letter and diacritic should normally be viewed as single symbols i.e. as equivalent to such simple symbols as a, b, c. Examples on vowels Ogonic a, with a rightward curving hook unlike the leftward curving cedilla c, vowel nasalization. In standard Lithuanian, the nasalization is historical and the vowels are now simply reflected as long vowels, but some dialects still preserve nasalized vowels. Occasionally used to indicate low mid quality in e, o, overdo, e o, under dot, e o, high mid vowel quality, e o, distinguished from plain e o indicating low mid vowels. The overdo is normally found in Lithuanian, the under dot in Slovenian. Inverted breve below, e, i, o, u, indicating nonsyllabic vowels, often, it is the second part of a diphthong. Hachek e, with a pointed V shape, rather than the rounded U shape of the breve, e, in Slavic reconstructions, is a vowel known as yat, distinct in length and later quality from simple e originally longer and lower, later, longer and higher in many dialects, but e, in Czech, sometimes indicates instead a simple e, with palatalization of the preceding consonant detain a. O, O, U originally indicated a high mid o or diphthongized u -o in various Slavic languages respectively, Slovak, dialectal Russian, Polish, Upper Sorbian, Lower Sorbian, Czech. It now indicates u in Polish and long u in Czech, examples in consonants. Most diacritics on consonants indicate various sorts of palatal sounds such as an acute accent c -g -k -l -n -r -s -z, a comma g -k -l -n, a hotchik c -d -l -n -r -s -t -z, or an overbar d. They can indicate three palatoalveolars c -s -z, they have a hushing pronunciation t as in English kitchen, mission, vision and are less palatal than the sounds indicated by c -s -z. Alveolopalatals CDSZ, as in Polish and Serbo-Croatian. Palatal stops voiceless K, K, T and voiced G, G, D in Macedonian, Latvian and Czech, respectively. A palatal nasal NNN. A palatal lateral LLL, or A palatalized trill R, also R in Czech specifically for a fricative trill. In Slovak, L and R indicate doubled rather than palatal ist consonants verba equals willow, hlbka equals depth. In Western West Slavic Polish, Kashubian, Upper Sorbian and Lower Sorbian, Z indicates a voiced retroflex sibilant. Other such sibilants are indicated by digraphs like CZ, SZ. In Western West Slavic, L indicates a sound that was once a dark velarized L but is now usually pronounced W. Topic. Accent paradigms Proto-Balto-Slavic, just like Proto-Indo-European, had a class of nominals with so-called mobile accentuation in which accent alternated between the word stem and the ending. The classes of nominals are usually reconstructed on the basis of Vedic Sanskrit and Ancient Greek, which have retained the position of the original Pi accent almost unchanged. However, by comparing the Balto-Slavic evidence, it was discovered that the Pi rules on accent alternations, devised on the basis of Vedic and Greek, do not match those found in Balto-Slavic. Moreover, nominals that belong to mobile paradigms in Balto-Slavic belong to declension classes that always had fixed accent in Pi paradigms, a stems and o stems. For a long time, the exact relationships between the accentuation of nominals in Balto-Slavic and Pi was one of the most mysterious questions of Indo-European studies, and some parts of the puzzle are still missing. 
Research conducted by Christian Stang, Ferdinand de Saussure, Vladislav Ilyich Svidik, and Vladimir Dybo has led to a conclusion that Balto Slavic nominals, with regard to accentuation, could be reduced to two paradigms, fixed and mobile. Nominals of the fixed paradigm had accent on one of the stem syllables, and in the nominals of the mobile paradigm, the accent alternated between the stem and the ending. As shown by Ilyich Svitik, Balto Slavic nominals of the fixed paradigm correspond to the pi nominals with accent on the root. Pi baritones. The only exception were nominals with the accent on the ending pi oxytones when it was shifted onto the root in Balto Slavic in accordance with Hertz's law. Such nominals also have fixed accent in Balto Slavic. The origin of the Balto-Slavic nominals of the mobile paradigm has not been completely determined, with several proposed theories of origin. According to Ilik Svitik, they originate as an analogical development from fixed accent pi oxytones. That theory has been criticized as leaving unclear why pi nominals with fixed accent on the ending would become mobile, as analogies usually lead to uniformity and regularity. According to Meye and Stang, Balto Slavic accentual mobility was inherited from pi consonant and vowel stems but not for o stems, where they represent Balto Slavic innovation. Vedic and Greek lost the accentual mobility in vowel stems, retaining it only in consonant stems. De Saussure explained it as a result of accent retraction in the medially stressed syllables of consonant stems exhibiting the hysterokinetic paradigm, with vocalic stems subsequently imitating the new accentual patterns by analogy. According to Dybo the position of Balto-Slavic accent is determined by a formula from pi tones according to the valence theory developed by the Moscow School, which presupposes lexical tone in pi. Cortland up to 2006 supported the theory of Balto-Slavic losing pi consonant stem accentual mobility in nominals, and innovating everywhere else, but after 2006 maintains that the original pi accentual mobility was preserved in Balto-Slavic in a stems, a stems, i stems, u stems and consonant stems. The Balto-Slavic accentual system was further reworked during the Proto-Slavic and Common Slavic period Debo's law, Meye's law, Ivzik's law, etc., resulting in three Common Slavic accentual paradigms conventionally indicated using the letters A, B, C, corresponding to four Lithuanian accentual paradigms indicated with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 in a simple scheme. Topic. Fixed paradigm with acuted root the simplest accentuation is that of nominals which were acuted on the root in Balto-Slavic. They remain accented on the root root here is understood in the Proto-Balto-Slavic, not the Pi sense throughout the paradigm in Baltic Lithuanian first accentual paradigm and Slavic accent paradigma. Russian exhibits Polnoglasy, in which liquid diphthongs receive an epenthetic vowel after them. An acute accented liquid diphthong yields accent on the epenthetic vowel, a circumflex accented one results in accent on the first original vowel R greater than oro, R greater than oro. Serbo-Croatian and Slovene show metathesis instead. Serbo-Croatian does not reflect the acute as a tonal distinction but shows short falling accent consistently for all words with post-Slavic initial accent regardless of tone. The short falling accent in the genitive plural has been lengthened due to the loss of er. The addition of a is a later innovation. Slovene has a rising vowel, which reflects the original acute. All short accented vowels in non-final syllables were lengthened, which eliminated the length distinction in the genitive plural. Topic. Fixed paradigm with non-acuted root in the nouns with non-mobile initial accent, which did not have an acuted root syllable, both Lithuanian and Slavic had an independent accent shift occur, from the root to the ending. In Lithuanian, they are the nouns of the second accent paradigm and in Slavic, the accent paradigm B. Lithuanian noun ranka, hand, etymologically corresponds to Russian ruka and Serbo-Croatian ruka, but both became mobile in a later common Slavic development so the reflexes of the Proto-Slavic noun asterisk juxa soup are listed instead in lithuanian the initial accent was preserved in all cases where the ending did not contain an acuted syllable in the forms that had an acuted ending nominative vocative and instrumental singular accusative plural the accent shifted onto the ending in accordance with the rule discovered by de saussure later that acuted syllable was shortened by leskian's law 
In Slavic, the accent shifted from the root onto the ending in accordance with Debo's law, regardless of the syllable nature whether it was acuted in Balto-Slavic or not so the nouns of the B paradigm are consistently accented on the ending oxytonic, except in the instrumental plural. In the Neostokavian dialects of Serbo-Croatian, which are used as the basis for standard Bosnian, Croatian and Serbian, the so-called Neostokavian retraction occurred, the accent was retracted from the ending onto the root syllable and became rising. Old Stokavian and Kakavian dialects preserved the original ending stressed paradigm. Slovene also has retraction of the accent, which results in a long rising tone. Topic. Mobile paradigm Nominals with mobile accent had in some cases an accented first syllable, in others an accented ending. Lithuanian distinguishes two accent paradigms of these nominals, depending on whether the root was acuted, as in the fixed paradigm, or not. If the root was acuted, it is said to belong to third accent paradigm. If the root was not acuted, then, by the operation of de Saussure's law, the accent shifted onto all the acuted endings in the paradigm, and these nouns are accounted as belonging to the fourth accent paradigm. In Proto Slavic, the operation of Meyer's law converted acute roots to circumflexed in mobile nominals, so that the split found in Lithuanian does not occur. All nominals with mobile accentuation in Balto Slavic belong to one accent paradigm in Slavic, accent paradigm C. Lithuanian has preserved the best Balto-Slavic mobile paradigm. The Proto-Slavic initial accent is preserved as a circumflex by Meyer's law. In Neostokavian, the final accent has been retracted and gained rising intonation. In Slovene, several advancings and retractions of the accent have occurred so it no longer reflects the original position as neatly. All non-accented vowels were shortened, and all non-final accented vowels were lengthened. Post-Balto-Slavic developments In the later Balto-Slavic languages, the acute articulation itself was often lost, leaving only the pitch distinction on accented syllables as the reflex. There, acute is only a type of pitch accent, rather than a specific articulatory feature. The Slavic languages have no trace of the acute articulation and preserve only tonal distinctions although most have since lost even those, in their development from Proto-Slavic. The East Baltic languages preserve some traces of the original acute articulation, in the form of the so-called broken tone, the is a long vowel with a glottal stop in the middle of it, typically denoted by a circumflex diacritic, not to be confused with the circumflex accent, a, a, a. The broken tone is preserved in syllables in certain dialects of Latvian and Lithuanian. The broken tone can occur on unaccented syllables so it is not actually a tone but a register distinction, much like the Danish stod or the na tone in northern Vietnamese. The short accent was preserved as such in both the Baltic and Slavic languages, but its lengthening could be triggered by certain conditions. For example, in Lithuanian, vowels, a, and, e, were lengthened when they initially bore short accent in open syllable, and rising tone emerged, marked with tilde sign a. Compare, pi asterisk k eek lo circle, wheel, greater than Balto Slavic asterisk kakla greater than Lithuanian kaklas neck, Serbo Croatian kolo. Pi asterisk decim t ten greater than Balto Slavic asterisk decimt greater than Lithuanian decimt, Serbo Croatian deset. Topic Latvian The most direct continuation of the acute is in Latvian, particularly in the three tone central dialects. There, the acute register is directly continued as a broken tone lausta in originally unstressed syllables, marked with a circumflex diacritic, luogs window. In originally stressed syllables, the acute register is continued as a rising or lengthened intonation steepta, marked with a tilde, luox spring onion. The circumflex register is generally continued as a falling intonation cridosa, marked with a grave accent, luox arch, bow. It can occur on all syllables, locative plural gal, vas on the heads compare, Lithuanian galvos with stress on a short final vowel, deleted in Latvian, including monosyllables, det to lay eggs topic Lithuanian In Lithuanian, the distinction between acute and circumflex is not preserved in unstressed syllables. In standard Lithuanian, based on the Oxtatian dialect, the acute becomes a falling tone so-called Lithuanian metatony and is marked with an acute accent, and the circumflex becomes a rising tone, marked with a tilde. In diphthongs, the acute accent is placed on the first letter of the diphthong while the tilde marking rising tone the original circumflex is placed on the second letter. 
In diphthongs with a sonorant as a second part, the same convention is used, but the acute accent is replaced with a grave accent. Lithuanian pilnas full the shortening operated according to Leskian's law after the Lithuanian metatony. In monosyllabic words, the acute became circumflexed. Metatonical retraction of the accent from the final syllable to the penultimate syllable also created a circumflex automatically. In the Zamatian dialects of Lithuanian, the usual reflex of Balto-Slavic acute in a stressed syllable is a broken tone like Latvian, Zamatian Kretinga Om Ios, age, century, equals standard Omsius. Topic. Old Prussian In Old Prussian, the acute was reflected probably as a rising tone and circumflex as a falling tone. The marks on long vowels and diphthongs in Abel Will's translation of Martin Luther's Enchiridion point to that conclusion. It is the only accented Old Prussian text preserved. Diphthongs that correspond to a reconstructable Balto-Slavic acute are generally long in the second part of the diphthong, and those corresponding to a Balto-Slavic circumflex are generally long in the first part. Topic. Slavic In Proto-Slavic, the acute was lost as an articulatory feature and retained only as a tonal distinction on accented syllables. The acute produced a rising tone and the circumflex a falling tone, as in Latvian and Old Prussian. Several developments in late Common Slavic affected vowel length. Syllables that were originally short could lengthen, and those originally long could shorten. However, the long vowels also acquired different quality from the short ones so lengthenings and shortenings did not cause them to merge. Instead, the vowels remained separate, causing the number of distinct vowels to almost double. Thus, differences vowel quality reflected older length distinctions while new vowel length distinctions were conditioned by accent type and placement. Consequently, in the Slavic languages that retain it, vowel length is often a suprasegmental feature tied to the accentual system rather phonemes. In Czech, Slovak and Old Polish, the mobile accent was lost in favor of fixed stress, which rephomicized the older accentual length distinctions. Thus, the languages have long vowels as distinct phonemes, but they do not reflect the original Proto-Slavic length distinctions. In all Slavic languages, the acute was shortened when it fell on a long vowel. A new rising accent, the neoacute, generally long, developed from retraction of the stress from a weaker vowel, later usually lost. The short rising accent that developed from the old acute and in some circumstances, the neoacute was later lengthened again in a number of Slavic languages such as Russian, Czech, Slovenian. The circumflex was shortened in some dialects as well such as Polish, Russian, Czech, Slovak. Direct continuation of the acute versus circumflex difference as a tonal distinction occurs only in archaic Serbo-Croatian dialects such as Chikavian and, to some extent, Slovenian although the relationship between Slovenian and Proto-Slavic tones and accent position is complex. In addition, the Proto-Slavic tonal distinction on liquid diphthongs is reflected fairly directly in Russian as a multisyllable accent shape, pleophony, asterisk or falling greater than oro, asterisk or rising greater than oro. In some other languages, most notably Czech and standard Neoštokavian Serbo-Croatian, the acute versus circumflex distinction is continued as a length distinction, although in all languages, both long and short vowels have other sources as well. The length from tone distinction no longer exists in Russian. Here is a table of basic accentual correspondences of the first syllable of a word. Topic: Proto-Baltic and Proto-Slavic. Scholars raised questions regarding the possible relationship between Slavic and Baltic languages as early as the late 18th century. In 1802 the influential German scholar of Slavic languages and history August Ludwig von Schlosser described how his understanding of this relationship had changed over the years, whereas previously he had argued that the Latvian or Old Prussian peoples spoke languages that belonged to the Slavic group, he had come to see them as an independent language family. It was formerly thought that Balto-Slavic split into two branches, Baltic and Slavic, which both developed as a single common language for some time afterwards. More recently, scholarship suggests that Baltic was not a single branch of Balto-Slavic. See also Proto-Slavic Baltic languages 
Balto Slavic languages Notes References Frederick Cortland, 2002. From Proto Indo European to Slavic. PDF. Matasovic, Ranko, 2008. Poredbenopoviezna Gramatica Hrvatskoga Jizika in Croatian, Matica Hrvatska. Baltic Languages, 2014. In Encyclopædia Britannica. Retrieved from http colon slash slash www.britannica.com slash ebchecked slash topic slash slash Proto-Slavic language, 2014. In Encyclopædia Britannica. Retrieved from http colon slash slash www.britannica.com slash ebchecked slash topic slash four eight oh two one three slash proto Slavic language. Cortland, Frederick, nineteen seventy nine. Toward a Reconstruction of the Balto-Slavic Verbal System, Vol. 49. Anderson, Henning 2003. Slavic and the Indo-European Migrations. Language Contacts in Prehistory. Studies in Stratigraphy, Current Issues in Linguistic Theory, Amsterdam Philadelphia, John Benjamins, 239-45-76. Stang, Christian 1966, Vergleichende Grammatik der Baltischen Sprechen in German, Oslo Bergen Tromso, Universitätsvorlaget.